I'm out in the shed again. Um, I've obviously been busy because it's once again a giant mess, but I haven't really achieved that much. The second radiator, I'm still working on that, the shell. Um, you can see it's been so long, the steel is actually starting to surface rust, so I should probably wipe that down with some oil or something. And I've been messing around mainly with the, the controls. Uh, these are the two controls that live in the middle of the steering wheel. Um, there's a couple of setups of these. I've got the earlier setup where the levers are for hand throttle and manual ignition advance. And I've kind of talked about these a bit before. It's, uh, since that point, I've had some extra information thanks to people who have commented and sent me some photographs and different little bits of information about how this works. And I actually now have a much better understanding of how this all fits together. Um, this is a bit backwards at the moment. Uh, the first thing to note is, again, there are different versions of these parts and you have to get the right ones to work with each other. So this is the lever for the hand throttle. And um, this one looks the same as this one, but this one is actually longer. Uh, the way I've got this set up at the moment, this is actually backwards. So this lever goes on this side. It's actually pinned to the shaft. That's why it's sitting through there in this direction at the moment because uh, this is pinned normally with a taper pin, but I've actually drilled it out and I replaced the shaft and fitted a roll pin to hold that arm in place. But to actually get it in place, I need to take the steering box out because you have to poke it through from that direction, obviously. So this is just a temporary setup. Um, you can see there's a, an arm on the back that works the throttle. So that comes all the way through. And if you imagine that this arm is where it's supposed to be, the end of this finger then runs effectively on the end of this shaft, which is, which is one of the controls that comes through. So it's two concentric shafts. And I was correct that there is a cam that lives on there. And that, if you imagine when you rotate that control, the cam, if this finger is resting on that cam, uh, it'll lift the throttle up just a little bit. Um, you can see this is where the linkage will go to the pedal. And if you imagine the finger on the end of the cam, as you rotate that cam, it lifts this just a little bit to give you a little bit of throttle opening. Uh, that's how that works. Now, obviously the shape of that cam is fairly critical. And somebody very, very kindly has offered to send me one, um, which is on the way now from Australia. I'm very, very grateful for that because trying to get that right without having one to copy would be almost impossible. So, um, Thanks so much for that. You'll, you'll know who you are. I don't like to say people's names on this. Um, in, the, in the films, I'd, I'd like to respect people's privacy, which is uh, part of my job at the moment. But um, I've also been looking at how these plates go. So the single plate, or the single-ended plate, fits on first. And I'm going to, probably going to have to change these spaces around. Um, I don't know if I can get that off, but you can see this plate's just held by one of the studs and goes through the center of the shaft. So that, when it's on there, presses up hard against this second lever. And this second lever is for the advance. And what you have, if you can see it, is I laser cut some leather washers and they sit between the housing and the little arm and the back plate. I put them on both sides, um, they've been oiled and what they do is provide enough friction as well as an oil seal to stop any um, steering box grease coming out of the box there. Uh, that's what provides the friction in the system so that when you turn the steering wheel, the levers don't move because you've got the shaft for the steering column, which is hollow, and then you've got these two control shafts running down the middle of it. 
so you don't want them to move while you turn the steering wheel. And those leather washers, once everything's bolted together, provide enough friction that you can turn the steering wheel without adjusting the, the lever positions. And you can see at the moment, it's just floating around, um, that lever there is the advanced retard lever. So that works like that. And I'm guessing the reason this, this plate doesn't go all the way is to have enough room there for that lever. And I've just got a temporary rod set up here. And what I've been trying to figure out is the advanced retard mechanism, which is up here. So you've got this rod, which has to be kinked. And as you, well, it's a bit hard to reach, but as you move that control up and down, if this is actually pinned to that properly, as you move this up and down, it moves that lever. Um, because I was missing all of these parts, I had to make something. And I've actually done it a little bit differently to how it is originally. So originally there's another brass arm here with a little ball on the end, and the ball fits in the end of this lever on the magneto. There's a hole here, and the ball comes up, and as that lever moves, it engages in the hole and pushes this lever backwards and forwards. Um, I've done it a little bit differently. I fitted a ball end to the lever, and I milled up this little block with a slot in it. And the way that works is it pushes on the little ball to move the advanced retard lever. So as it moves, of course, this ball is effectively going up and down in the slot and it's going forwards and backwards because of the curvature. If it'll focus again, which you might be able to see. Um, it is a bit tricky to see, but I machined that up, I made the little bracket, um, I machined up this little arm and because I don't know exactly how much motion I needed, I gave it a range of motion. Um, there is a, uh, I've seen pictures of it where it's actually quite a long lever here, but of course all these distances are critical and it all depends on what levers you've got at this end and, and all sorts of things. So one of the biggest difficulties I've had is I'm not actually sure how much advance these engines need to run. Um, the static timing is set up to top dead center and I haven't actually been able to find a figure for what the maximum sort of advance you'd ever want on an engine like this is. So I just compared it to what I've got and what I know. Um, an MGB I think the maximum advance is about 32 degrees and on an Austin 7 from a factory it wasn't much at all. Uh, I think it was eight degrees on the uh, automatic advance distributor and I think the manual cars like the early chummies gave you about 18 on the lever so it gives me kind of a ballpark figure of what it should be so what I ended up doing is I measured the diameter of the flywheel and I worked out the circumference from the radius and I actually put little marks on the flywheel just with a grease pencil at uh, 10 degree intervals. So if I take the top as being top dead center, um, this is my, my top dead center mark. There's no actual timing mark on here, there's just this little hole that you can sort of see through. And so I've got 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and the first bolt on the clutch cover is effectively 30 degrees. It's, it's all a bit approximate, but it's, it's close enough. Uh, and then what I was able to do is rotate the engine by hand with my fake starting handle and check where the points are opening. Um, I already actually knew where the um, top dead center point is when this sparks and starts. Uh, you may have seen my, my earlier films where I was having trouble getting the engine to fire the first time because with this all the way in the most retarded position, it wasn't actually sparking. So I had to have the lever set forward a little bit um, and 
I set that as my maximum retard position, uh, so effectively zero degrees I guess because it's at top dead center, and then I worked out on this where about 30 degrees was to give me a figure to work from, and I don't know that we'll be able to see it, but it's a bit dark in here. I've actually drawn a little, yeah, you can just see a little white mark, so that's effectively about there is about 30 degrees. So it gives me an idea of how much movement there is on this thing in, in actual use, because I've never seen one before, so I don't actually know how much motion do you need here. But that gives me a range of sort of, where are we? From there to about there. Um, so all I need to do is set this up so that the linkage is on the right hole here, it's going to be up fairly close, so that when this is at the, the ends of its travel, because uh, this effectively works as a stop, it can't go any further than these two points, and I make that my maximum and minimum, that should give me the full range of travel on the advanced retard lever in the car. And uh, that should actually all work pretty well, except I forgot one thing. And this is where it's kind of like the curse of the Riley Brooklands, where there's no room for anything comes into play. So you can see here, this is where the side of the radiator goes. So the line of the bonnet actually goes from here across, and you can see where the, the gooseneck starts bending out, or rather it's bent in here and then bends back to straight. So the bonnet actually follows a line along here, and you can kind of see what that means. Um, try get a piece of cardboard. Uh, you can see what the problem is, basically. This sticks too far out. So I need to just redo that bit. I think I've got my linkages correct. I just need to move it all in closer, which just needs a new bracket here. Um, and then when I went back and checked pictures of other cars and the bracket there, it can be a bit hard to see. But yes, the bracket is in, it's, it's effectively round the other way, it's in much closer. Um, I was quite pleased with myself making up this little bracket. I actually machined up a little bush here that's all reamed out. Uh, there's a little oil drip hole in the top to keep it all nice and lubricated. It's all nice and solid. But yeah, it sticks out too far. So that's the job. I have to do now, basically, redo this bracket, move all of this in so that this lever is, is nice and tight in there so it's not going to hit the line of the bonnet. Um, obviously the, the bonnet is straight, the sides of the bonnet are straight, um, they have to be because it's hinged part way along, at least I think it is. Uh, again, I need to check this, but if we look at the Austin 7, um, there's a hinge in the middle there so that you can lift up the bonnet like that. And obviously for that style of hinge to work it has to be a straight line. So I'm pretty sure the bonnets are always straight. Um, that back down. So I need to go check my plan drawings, but yeah, the, 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 the line of the bonnet is, the panels of the bonnet are straight across there. So that's all looking good. I have ordered some uh, stainless steel rod. So these little, little throttle ball ends, I'm actually one short. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four, I need six because I need to go from here down to the throttle pedal. I've actually got an original vintage um, brass one, which I can use on the throttle pedal end, I think. Because um, if I have to buy more of these, they're, they're pretty expensive. And they have to come from the UK, from Berlin, who are really expensive for shipping. But these use a 2BA thread. So I've ordered some, uh, it's actually 5 mil stainless steel rod, I think originally it would have been 3 16 and uh, 5 mils close enough that I can tap 
and uh, I can rather put a 2BA thread on there to fit these little adjusters, uh, little ball lens. So that's on the way. This bit of rod I've got isn't quite long enough, so I'm pretty sure the linkage is going to need to be up quite high to give me the, the range of motion I require. And with the rod too short, I can't get the full, the full motion there, but it'll be something like that. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, I usually wait until things are finished, until I put them up, but it's been quite a long week. We've had really bad weather here. It hasn't been very pleasant being out in the shed, so I haven't done it a lot of the time, and I've been having some quite long days at work. So um, that explains why I haven't got too far with this. I'm trying to remember where I got up to last time. I think I was still messing around with the linkages for the... Um, manual advance control. I ended up having to remake that. Um, originally I had it in two pieces. I had a little let's see, the little slotted piece that engages with the ball on the end of the lever and I had a separate arm uh, which I think was this piece here that I just sort of made up on the mill. So I decided well I could make that all one piece which will be a lot more reliable and a lot simpler and so this is what I came up with in the end it's basically the same thing it's a little milled up arm sort of narrowed down on the back here so I can actually get the the ball end bolt through um, I had to redo this little bracket uh, just bolts on there there's just kind of a bush in there uh, it's just actually steel on steel. Um, I machined up a, a sort of special flat washer and there's a screw that goes into this little half inch diameter bar and that's what sort of holds it all in place. And you can see the curved linkage that comes up and that now then operates the uh, advance. I did go and check um, that it does give me from zero advance to mm -hmm. close to 30 degrees, which I think is actually too much, but better to have too much than too little. And the uh, leather washers and things that I've got in the system are working to make it so that you can turn the steering wheel. It's a bit hard when it's not moving. Um, it's also obviously missing a bracket at the top end of the column here which will stiffen all of this up um, once the body's in place but the middle lever isn't doing anything at the moment that's still loose um, but this outer lever does move nicely and you can sort of see maybe so that that moves really well uh, the motion's nice and smooth so I think that'll work uh, the way I've got this set up there's a lot of different ways you could set this up. I don't actually know what the original controls were like, um, but I've set it up so the advance is on the right here, and you push it up to advance it. Um, I used to have an Austin 7 Chummy that had manual advance, and I can't remember which way around it actually went on that, but that kind of makes sense to me, push it up to advance it. Uh, so that's all working nicely, and I've also been playing around with the throttle pedal. So I've actually made something up now. This shape is patterned on an original one. Uh, they do have that kind of funny sort of cut off rectangle shape. Um, I've just made mine the same and I was playing around with the linkages to figure out how much um, motion I actually want on the pedal uh, because of course that all depends on all of these linkages and levers and and you can, you can play around with the lengths and change what actually happens. Um, this is still the wrong way around. This arm goes on the other side. But you can see I've just got it sort of pushed through there at the moment. Um, I can either put another ball end on there or I, I've actually ordered some, uh, some more brass tube. I did get this stainless steel rod, but I found it doesn't actually thread very well. I don't like how it's, how it's threaded. And one of these threads is actually stripped a little bit where the lock nut goes. So I've actually ordered more brass. I'm going to remake those from brass. 
But what I can do is um, I could actually just poke this through uh, the same way it is with a, with a washer and a split pin on it. That'll actually work quite well for that, that end of the linkage. Um, the only reason I'm saying that is because these things are really expensive. I think they're about $40 each, plus I have to get them from Berlin, so that'll be about another $50 just in postage. So I may get some more if I end up ordering more SU needles or, or something like that. The, the little ball end here only has a certain length of thread on it. It's not very long, so you can see this is a uh, 3 more plate. But those little ball ends aren't long enough to actually go through a lever like this. So pushing it through like that should work fine. Um, but you can see with the throttle pedal, that's giving me full. So from there to go back far enough, there to there is completely closed to fully wide open. And by adjusting the length of this rod, you can, you can set where the pedal sits in relation to the brake pedal. So that'll need a little bit of tweaking, I think, um, so that I can set it up nicely for heel-toe driving. Where I've got it at the moment is pretty good. So uh, you can see you start pushing the brake and then you can, you can get your heel on the accelerator pedal, no problem. And there's also easily enough room there if I'm wearing the right shoes to, to, to fit in the footwell. So the next job is take the steering box off to get this lever through the right way. But one thing I want to fix is this is just a casting and you can see over the years there's quite a lot of wear in that. So what I will actually do is I've machined up a couple of um, bronze bushes uh, I think they're half inch inside diameter to match the shaft and I've made them 9 sixteenths on the outside. I will um, basically machine this out or ream this out so I can push those bushes in to take up that slot uh, because that, you know, that's a good half inch of movement on the, the throttle pedal. Um, I don't think it would matter. I, it would just be nice to get rid of that though. So since I have to take the box off anyway, um, which is my next job, I will fit those little bushes inside there. I have got another steering box and I checked that one and it's actually not as worn, but um, this is the one I've got all nicely set up, so I'll, I'll fix this one. And I think that's it for there. I am still working on the radiator, of course. Um, That'll be the next job. Since I have this all off the car, I thought it would be easier to explain it sitting, sitting in the vise. So it's not all squished up against the engine block so we can actually see what's happening. Um, and I took the opportunity to finish off a few things. I put in the bolt. And that's just the pinch bolt on the, the steering drop arm. And I did end up reaming out the housing here to 9 sixteenths. Uh, it was a little bit tricky. I used a, a hand file to sort of slightly widen the hole so I could get the reamer to start and then managed to ream it through. And the bushes are held in with some um, Loctite 638 bearing fit which can take up quite a big gap. So those are held in there nicely. Um, to keep them in alignment I just sort of sat them in there and put a temporary bar through. Uh, that was not a half inch diameter because there was too much danger of the Loctite getting in there and locking it all in place. So it was a slightly smaller diameter bar that was just sort of sitting across the bushes. Um, just a bit of weight and it just keeps them aligned. Uh, and then once those were, were in there, when I made the bushes, I drilled them out to half inch, but I didn't bother reaming them on the lathe. Um, I waited until they were in the housing and Loctited in place and then I, I ran the half inch reamer through so the shaft would go through. Um, you can also see how the throttle return spring fits. Um, that is why there's sort of wear on that housing, just where it touches. And I also fitted um, a couple of leather washers soaked in oil because eventually these do kind of wear through the, the aluminium there. And 
This now shows the, the arm that goes to the throttle cam in the right place. So you can see here, this. once the, the cam uh, arrives, I'll know how thick it is, and then I'll know what size spaces I need to put in here and in here. Um, I don't know what the thickness of that cam is yet. But that cam will go on to this shaft, which is the inner shaft, and you can see how the arm can then ride up on that cam. Um, it won't ride up very far, but you can see now how the shaft goes across the steering box. This will be the linkage from the throttle pedal, and as you push that, it turns the lever, which lifts this arm up, which opens the uh, throttle up, and you can see how the cam will go in there, and that'll be able to lift up that arm just a little bit. And that's what gives you your sort of fast idle. And then when you put your foot on the throttle pedal, it'll lift up off the cam. So that's how that works. Uh, the other thing I did since I've got everything off is fitted a, um, a temporary oil pressure gauge on an on a actual uh, decent length of oil hose. So what I'll do now is I'll bolt the steering box back in place. This is all back together again now and you can kind of see how when it's in the car there's not a lot of room. Um, everything's very tight. The choke linkage only just misses the steering box. Um, the advance lever which has gone over center um, that going over center there can only be done from this end um, if you're operating it from the lever it won't actually do that but it is possible to push on that and get it to pop off um, I may need to do something there but I think once it's all set up in the car it's fine that shouldn't actually happen so That's the advanced retard lever. Um, and you can see at the moment I've just got this temporary rod pushing on that hole there. But that comes down to the accelerator pedal. Um, obviously you can adjust, uh, adjust the length of this rod to set where the pedal sits. And you can also adjust this arm. So this is just held by a pinch bolt on here. Um, so you can... Um, effectively shift the position of the pedal by moving this arm a little bit on the shaft. Um, you want to keep it though so that the, the range of motion here so that it goes in a, in a nice arc. But you can see now, push on the throttle pedal and that neatly opens the throttle butterflies. Um, also, of course, once I fitted those bushes inside there, that's taken all the slop out of that. Um, to be honest, the spring, I think, would do that as well, once you've got that spring tension on there, pulling on it. But uh, I think this will be better. It'll stop it wearing. It's gone back to circular now. It's not, not an oval, which is probably caused by the, the wear on this. I've also pumped this full of grease. So there is a gap in the middle. The bush... It wasn't one long bush, it was two short ones because, of course, this has to come apart. Um, so there's two three-quarter inch long bushes either end with a space in the middle for grease. So that should keep it all nice and lubricated. Um, and the pedal position, I need a slightly longer rod, I think, because it needs to come out just a little bit. But that's pretty much set up nicely for, for driving now, I think. So... It's actually been quite a bit of work just to get that all to fit. Oh, the only other slight thing I had to do was um, bend my fuel inlet pipe out of the way because you can see the lever that the cam works on. Um, if this pipe came out straight, which is how I had it before, it would interfere with that lever. So I've just put it, pointed it towards the block. So it's just bent in a little bit. 
um, the fuel line will come in from here and then just hook up onto that uh, so that'll go from the fuel pump which will be mounted up on the, the scuttle which is kind of up here somewhere so that fuel line um, I can't remember exactly where the the firewall goes it's somewhere in here but the fuel pump is mounted on that although uh, the firewall comes up and then back I think so there's kind of a shelf up here and I think the fuel pumps up here somewhere um, that'll all become more obvious once I actually sort out the the body so that's looking good now um, I like the way the pedals have come out the uh, they've got the sandpaper grip tape stuff on them that was recommended by the the vehicle inspector guy um, he said that was probably a good idea so I've only put it on the brake and the clutch pedal I'm gonna leave the accelerator smooth um, so that you can slide your heel across it but that's good um, now the next thing is back back onto the radiator I guess and just to prove I can fit there's the, the clutch and oops, here's the brake and the throttles there so like I say I need to play with the position oops but that should be doable obviously I'm going to have to practice in this car to get the hang of that um, I have been practicing in my my MGB so I can heel toe in that um, you don't have to obviously the the gearbox has synchros but um, in this car oh, it's, usually the gearbox isn't sitting in the position where all the gears just slip in naturally but uh, yeah that gives you some idea of the gear throw as well so it's looking good one final thing it's about 4 30 in the afternoon now here and it's getting a little bit chilly um, so i'm going to go in for the day but yesterday before it started raining i um, started up the Land Rover to make sure the battery and that was good and started up the Austin 7 and bought that out and did a few laps around our track uh, the ground was very mushy but uh, it was good I had great fun and I also discovered I can spin up the back wheels um, when taking off on concrete so gives you some idea of how small the car is and how narrow the tires are so that gives you some idea but yeah I was actually able to to get them spinning 